Greetings ladies and mental gents and welcome to my channel, where I like to make audio narrations of various stories from across the internet. In this series we will be focusing on a web novel called There Is No Epic Lucia, Only Puns, from the website Royal Road, and in this video we will be doing chapters 10 to 12. I hope that you enjoy. There Is No Epic Lucia, Only Puns, Chapter 10, Hole in the Ground. Delta watched as Francois bought a bucket of mushrooms for bacon. Delta grumbled as she flicked through her menus, looking for some way to turn the damn fungi grow forth. But she was the dungeon core, and she should have authority to do it. If she could just find out the right screen or option, Delta, having no other options, just kept feeding them to bacon to stop them occupying every little corner and wall. The only place that didn't seem to grow was the spider room, and Alta was not poking around in there to look for any reason why. Ob and Gob would be returning back soon with their bounty. Their last haul had some interesting results, namely that while Delta asked for fish, the goblins had brought back a crayfish. There was something fishy about that, but the goblins didn't seem to see the problem. As far as Delta knew, crayfish didn't live in a forest ponds or lakes. Or did they? Delta didn't even know where the nearest water source was. Maybe there was an ocean just over the river bend. To be honest, she knew that my crayfish could fit into a fortune cookie. Or maybe they did fire magic now. Delta pondered the idea of crayfish just living wherever they damn well pleased in this world. Terrifying, but power to them. Having a few dissolved in her dungeon gave more than a pleasing result, along with more mana, rocks and berries. Crayclaw has been unlocked in the monster purchase menu. Crayclaw, 10 DP, a large arthropod monster that lives in the water. About the size of the average cat and its right oversized pincher it uses to remove fingers and to tear food apart. Requires water features present in a dungeon to summon. The new monster was always a potential gold mine. She could only get the ability to summon a Crayclaw and not balls from the pig was a question that she kind of wanted to be answered. But Delta let it go when all that she had the theories and guesses. The water part made sense. Delta could even see how such requirements would not really be asking much. Did you get a greyfish? Great. Now don't be an idiot and scoop up some of the habitats as well. Delta did have a pond room so she could use it if she really wanted the monsters in her dungeon. With a shrug, she flexed her mighty pool of 25 mana. Delta felt that it was time to put her dungeon into working order and hopefully all that it could take in a hallway and some rearrangements. Delta opened up her map and tried to drag the hallway about. Moving a hallway requires 5 DP. Moving a room requires 10 DP. Delta hummed and juggled the cost around to her 87 DP. What if she just wanted to move everything back? Huh, no actual cost for shifting her dungeon back. The hallways looked wonky at the corners, however, as they stretched temporarily. Delta assumed that there was a trick and a way to break it over her knee, but she just shrugged and got to work on her new dungeon layout. One tunnel that connected to the spider room from the entrance, and then one tunnel that connected from the spider room to everything else. Then Delta shrugged and pushed everything back. The lone tunnel collapsed and left only the way to progress into her dungeon was through the spider room. She quickly shifted the confused mushies into the new hallway with the usual cost. Thankfully, it had only been pushed to the erasure of the tunnel by the nature of the system. Her dungeon returned to normal proportions and Delta waited for the new tunnel to begin to empty itself of soil. Planks of wood formed along the wall and the dirt became hard packed. Everything was going swimmingly. Delta felt like a proper dungeon core person growing and she even had a good reasons, to challenge the weak world to get past the spiders and to stop them from meeting actual dangers. The tunnel stopped and Delta's mental map began to scream in abject horror. A space, a non-rectangular room appeared, tacked itself onto her map. Delta stumbled as if she fell to her knees and the space filled the spot of a room. She felt the man arise and fall in the room became a dungeon. It was some small cave with half of the room submerged in still clear water. Delta stumbled into it and stared at the space that she hadn't created but just claimed. The deep part of the water glowed and Delta froze as she saw a very familiar white light near the bottom. Another entrance to her dungeon. 
hesitating before snapping herself for being silly. Delta walked to the water and examined the small hole and then seemed to vanish into complete darkness. Some underwater vein that fed off the river, or a sea maybe. Well, at least Delta didn't have to build another pond room for her fishies. Her mana was at 55 and her DP pinged at 132. Delta scrambled to spend the mana before it could slip between her fingers. Her mind didn't offer suggestions, so Delta exploded another tunnel and room into existence as her menu rang with a little jingle. Cave Pond has been discovered 30 DP spent to claim this room. 45 mana and DP gained from converting elements. White Shell Absorbed, Common White Tail Fish Absorbed, Yellow Belly Cod Absorbed, Sand Crab Absorbed, Common Water Tangles Absorbed. Delta's eyes twitched as the bells from the soft, friendly metal band just kept coming and ringing in her head. Mushroom spells and underwater sea caves with too much going on. Delta just wanted to take a nice dungeon layout. Having only 25 mana left in her mind racing, Delta just stared at the pond. If she could run into a harmless cave, what else waited for her under her very feet? The silly dungeon core dug too deep, she said in a only half-joking voice. Delta waved the thought away when she examined her new items. Oh, she had fishies. Delta had always wanted an aquarium, or at least that's what the missing piece of what she was before being Delta suggested. She opened the menu and found the relevant page. Room upgrade cave pond. Upgrade to spawn and respawn common whitetail fish, 10 dp. Upgrade to spawn and respawn yellow belly cod, 15 dp. Upgrade water to spawn and respawn crayfish, 13 dp. Upgrade water to be purer of freshness, 5 dp. Upgrade pond to spawn and respawn sand crab, 7 dp. Delta beamed. This has potential. What good adventure cliche would she be if people couldn't fish? Another little jingle sounded out. Lumen mushrooms have finished developing, cost two mana. Delta looked around her cave and decided, just this once, some mushrooms wouldn't be amiss. Delta giggled and ran her finger down the purchase menu, and the menu asked, almost concerned, if she really wanted to buy all the upgrades for this room. Fishing minigame is a go. She commanded, and the menu dinged once and seemed to fade back with shock, as the pool room shook as the manor filled the air. A dungeon, the old lady Josie repeated with interest. Quist nodded, and the people gathered with the local library. There was no ancient law requiring that they did so. The library just had the most comfortable seats. Far out of town, a 15-minute walk at best, he explained. As people muttered, the mutterings wasn't anything actually important. People just made those noises because it was a proper thing to do in such meetings. Is it a dungeon like Castorums? Or the dungeon like Wallops? Asked the man who ran the pie shop. His pies were good as his were his prices. His selection, however, was abysmal. Chicken or fish? And Quist never could really get the man to answer what kind of fish were in the pies. Customs wallops requires a consent form and a proof of age. Quist reminded them and a few share of people grinned impishly. People, focus, we don't have all day to act like school children. The actual school children will be released soon and half of the people here will be on a bound to go home and feed their spawn. Quist said waspishly, and the people just stared at him. Now I can confirm with the tracks outside the dungeon that some logical leaps that may be faulty to the court of law, that this dungeon may have already consumed one farmer, three men hunting goblins, and a pig. As always, we must refer to our most logical and wisest elders in these times to suggest how we proceed. Quis nodded at old lady Josie. In the empty chair with Haldi should have been, and a man who was snoring. Haldi must have gotten stuck in his shop wrangling an ornery cheese. Gus had no idea how a level 5 lawman's locking spell had ended up on the man's door exactly as Quis had left the building, but Quis promised to look into the incident if Haldi tried to leave before the meeting was done. Can we tax it? Josie asked with narrowed eyes. People mumbled appropriately. Quis shook his head. Due to the growth of ancient laws, dungeons are non-taxable. A man with the narrow glasses threw in. Quis agreed and ignored how the man was too pale to be healthy. Poor Vaughn hadn't had so much as a banker of durance, and he sort of sat around recounting some gold coins that came in and left each and every day. 
Hmm. The snoring man snorted and blinked. Huh? What you want? He asked rudely, and then his eyes stopped again. But Quist managed to jostle the man's chair to make him stay awake. Dungeon, sell it to the fair play company. Everyone does. He grumbled and went back to sleep. Alderpick was not one for people, speaking, or effort, or generally doing anything. Quis aspired to follow this man's steps one day. As Haldi isn't present, Quis began and people seemed to send a thankful prayer above at this bit of news. I will speak on his behalf. I feel that we should at least see what classification of dungeon that we have on our hands. I spotted goblins, but that doesn't tell us much. Before we even begin to think of letting the kingdom know about this, we should confirm what we can and then decide on what we should do with the information. Otherwise, we could be giving away a potential moneymaker, and if we had more money in this town, we could hire more peacekeepers, and I could stop work worrying so much about this town. Chris smiled politely as people looked like they might agree. Oh, Lady Josie hummed. A town with a dungeon has been in fashion for the last 300 years. I would love to finally be on that trend. Tell my housespawn sister she can shove that insect dungeon up her... So, as we all know, or should know, but I don't have much faith in this community education system. Dungeons come in many flavors. We don't have too much in the way of records and other countries' dungeons. How we class this dungeon is important. Once the types would be easy, goblins only would be in this goblin dungeon. There is only about 15 of them in the world, so I hope that this dungeon has aspired to be a little better than them, Quiz said with a wistful sigh. What about the item drops? A younger man that reminded Quiz of a dog that has had its face smashed by the crush spell and then dropped off a cliff added an insult. Another way to class them, yes. If all monster drops, crystals, and herbs or spell books, they could be classed as loot dungeons. We won't know until we go check. And unless the dungeon has some odd entry requirements, like Hulika's dungeon, Chris trailed off, and the room went silent, a little quiet. Well, at least one way of knowing if the purity rings that they make their kids wear is working or not. A woman smirked, looking far too comfy, in her fur-lined coat with a long knife attached to her leg. Rooney, don't you have a cute rabbit to go gut? Quiz asked stiffly, and the woman yawned, showing off a tight muscle in her arms and the collection of scars. Quiz, don't you have some child's birthday party to piss on with your sour mood? She fired back casually. Rooney was the closest thing to the town that had for a resident active monster hunter and jerk, and Rooney excelled in both with minimal effort. Quis disliked her for many reasons. Shoving a fire crystal into his pants was one. Scaring him mid-spell while casting was another. Ruli most likely disliked him for making all of her weapons flop, like props in some play, setting her hair on fire and making her prey turn into ducks near the end of a hunt. Which is why they ended up hanging out together to drink and complain about everything together and annoy each other. It was the most stimulating thing Quiz could get out of this town most of the time. So, I'll skip the pussyfooting around. That you like to do. Wanna go dungeon spelunking? Ruli asked, teeth like fangs. Quiz gave a large sigh, and old Lady Josie nodded in agreement. You two can go. Anyone else here just doesn't have the time to adventure. The woman smiled tightly. What? Would that ruin your afternoon of complaining about fences and walking the same six streets over and over while we all pretend that we aren't all going to all snap one day and have a stake burning of the most annoying people in this town? Rudy asked innocently and Quiz agreed, but watched silently as old lady Josie stood. A little bit of power crept into the woman's form and the wolfbane of Durance stood before them for a moment, a being that could cut them down and make the small talk at the same time. The legend was gone, and old lady Josie just smiled. I have pies to bake, she said with a calm tone, and Ruli nodded. Pies? Important, she agreed, and lifted Quist with one hand as she quickly exited the bounty. Come on, fire dancer, we're going on a quest, she said with wide eyes. Quist just scowled at the wrong name and wondered how on earth Ruli kept annoying the town where most of the retired people shuffling about could break them with a finger. Haldi was nice, but he was also a wanted for 43 different provinces for his deeds as cheese alone. 
Just because no one was brave enough to follow him here didn't mean Quist wanted to see what would happen when the man was mildly disgruntled. End of chapter. There is no epic lucha, only puns. Chapter 11, Fishing for Compliments. Fish was a basic creature. Delta watched Platt on her back in the small bottom of the lake as fish swam above her. The lumen mushrooms growing softly on the ceiling like blurry stars. Delta really liked this room, spending four mana to populate the room with lumen mushrooms, while the once dark room now had a soft ambience that Delta wished that she could claim that she had planned. Able to see the dark shadows of the elegant fish, larger ones, and a few crayfish move about, seeing them mimicking normal crayfish habits, like taking fake snaps at each other, made Delta feel true peace for a brief moment. Her creatures did not need to eat. In a world where one did not starve, life became playful. Delta knew that there was some deep thing that she could say, but she decided that she was already deep into the pond as it was, at the bottom of it, in fact. Really, she should have been studying her menus to target her upgrades, plan the next purchase, aim for the next unlock, grind those numbers, and then what? Delta didn't care about any of those things at the moment. She was just wanted to enjoy the creation that she had brought about. Why rush off and make something else when she hadn't even seen enough of what she had done right here? The fish swam past Delta's held out a hand near it. The fish, a little bit of resistance as it passed through. She couldn't touch her creations yet, but she liked to think that they would enjoy it if she could. As pure logical thought, the pond would draw explorers to fish and stall in her dungeon. They would be fishing, and over a certain period of time, the pond would naturally fill its taken quarry. It would result in mana farming. As someone who wasn't a machine that crunched numbers and didn't see everything as a way to make her dungeon into some hyper-productive factory, Delta freely admitted she just really wanted a pond with fish in it. There was no real ulterior motive behind the act on Delta's side. She walked back to the beach. Part of her knew that she had to add a few more crawlers eventually, but decided to let the space exist peacefully for now. Besides, she had a whole new room to have fun with. Stuff cost mana, and Delta had an idea that she wanted to try. The plans came together like a crayon drawing in her head, but her powers did not protest. The room needed to change a little for it to work, however. How do I lower the floor, she muttered, hoping the question would be answered for her. Her prayers were answered as a menu appeared. Editing the room's size will cost DP. Lowering the floor to a meter would be 1 DP. Basic room cannot exceed construction sizes by more than 5 meters in any direction until further upgrades are found. Oh, thank you, Delta said, and the menu vanished without a word. Opening her map, she tapped on the room and held it. The menu appeared to focus on the room. Room customization. Size adjustment, 1 meter, 1 dp. Add room feature, grove 1 of 1, pond 1 of 1, layer 1 of 1, boss room 1 of 1. Add room reset function for added traps of weak quality. One trap per room currently, 10 dp. Dalta swallowed. That was a lot of numbers, and she reread it again to sort of got most of it. A special room could be inserted if they didn't exceed her limits of her room could have a special trap that might reset per use instead of a time limit. Dalta inhaled and shrugged. She would just have to do her three Ps later. Progress, purchase, and pace. She lowered the floor by two meters and then spoke aloud. Mud. Mud has been added to the construction menu. I don't know. I kind of like the balls it has. Ruli commented as she read the warning above the door. Quiz sighed it slightly, sloping down the path into the slightly larger tunnel opening than he expected. Well, don't speak too loudly. We don't know what will set off the dungeon. One wrong comment and we might be facing down a horde of who knows what. Quiz reminded and Rudy pulled out her knife. Quiz, I know how to keep my yap shut inside of a dungeon, unless we're already on dungeon ground and this entrance is a forked trap. I think that it, I'm safe. Once we're in, we use the one to two words max and use gestures as best we can. Every second we're inside, we learn about the dungeon, but it also learns from us. I don't want some monster learning that we're getting curious about it. 
I also don't want some innocent boulder core being scared because we're yelling about a dungeon calls in murdered villages. Ruli said as she cleaned the blade despite the fact that the blade was cleaner than some medical tools Chris had seen in his time. I forgot that you were part of a circus troop of adventurers, the bird feathers or some such, Chris said distractedly, knowing full well the name of her ex-group, the Hawk Claws, she said with a snap, making her dark face turn ugly with a snarl. Chris didn't think about the attractiveness of Rudy's face or such. He just decided that she was uglier with a snarl. Right, them. You're right, of course. We could be unlucky and strike one of the Forbidden Dungeons. Chris grimaced and Rudy actually recalled slightly. Forbidden Dungeons were a special type of dungeons that Chris had only seen twice in his journeys. Plague Dungeons and Abomination Dungeons. I forgot. Is Undead still on or off the list? Rooney asked lightly and Chris jumped at the chance to distract himself from thoughts that he was having and also to feel smarter than Rooney at the same time. No, they're legal again. The Dark Church of Eurethian petitioned and managed to remind the people that the Church of Light and the Gods can have unbiased dungeons, then so should they since the Dark Churches does not force their believers onto the angel spirit nature dungeons and should be respected in the same manner, Chris recalled. Undead were always an easy topic to play with. A plague dungeon used viruses and plagues as a main method of killing people. The problem was that it was not content to sit and wait for victims to usually ended up wiping out towns off the map in its haste to grow. All it took was one idiot to come out with the spores in his lungs and then the kingdom was gone in a week. Abomination dungeons were... Uh, broken. They started out just fine in some manner, and then either through someone taking the core or cracking in some manner, or the core losing control of its senses, the dungeon became a hole of amalgamations of monsters. The mana went in, but no mana came out. People who went in often came out to bring madmen, or so broken that death was a mercy. If one was found, then one was eradicated, and the land under it was eradicated. The people who had interacted with it were treated as the most gentle manner possible before their brains just gave up. Quiz saw one being removed. The saint had called down the wrath of his god, like an angry fist from the heavens. The hole in the ground screamed and leaked the vilest things that he had ever seen. People had just been spliced with things and left partially unformed and mentally undone. People had just stopped being human. Seeing his fry, pain exploded over his face as Rudy lowered her fist and face hard. We don't know, she said softly, and her eyes softened the touch. Pity, and that brought Quiz back to reality faster than anything. Really, did shaking me escape your boorish brain? He grunted as he ignored the glint of relief in Rudy's eyes before she snorted and stalked down into the dungeon. I shook your world once, never again. She cackled and once Chris narrowed his eyes. He had a perfect shot at her hair. One little fireball and she'd leave him alone for a week before trying to gut him in the street when enough of it grew back. Chris followed her down into the dungeon, chanting the spell of poor butterflies, just in case the temptation grew too much. The room was almost finished. The mud had taken a little over fifteen mana to fill up to her liking, leaving her with ten. Robin Gob should be back, but she wasn't worried. Delta had asked him to go a little further than normal to see what they could find. So, with the last ten mana, she made around ten wooden platforms in a spread out pattern one would have to jump on to get from one side to the other. Four of them were not big logs like the other three, but small floating pieces of wood that if jumped on would instantly sink and send the jumper into the muddy pit. Dangerous? No. Challenging, humiliating, and potentially time-wasting, yes. Delta was proud of her work, so proud that she was suddenly scared her hubris would be done something to strike out at her, as well as the menus closed down and the dungeon took on the feeling that she had never felt before. Life, that she had no insight into, had just walked into her dungeon. Delta was alerted to the fact that her monsters feel it too, but Delta could see it with just a... Something is here feeding, and then the feedback Delta got. She moved to the entrance and froze, as a woman in furs and a dark skin and a wicked-looking knife entered, followed by a man in his thirties with a perpetual scowl. 
His long, blue jacket, blonde hair and beard made him look rugged. His eyes held a depth that made Delta feel shy about staring into them for too long. The woman looked more honest than Delta liked her eyes. A dark, simmering red. Red eyes were cliched and often meant evil, but Delta had a feeling that this perhaps was more of a humans might have slept with something that they shouldn't have way back in the day situation, and odd colored hair or eyes might be common here. Though, if one's hair color began to change when one was powering up, Delta was done. She'd sleep with the fishies until her DP hit the max and she'd open up a wormhole to get out. Feeling, the man asked and the woman grunted. Norm, moving. She said and she headed down the tunnel. She was going to the spine room. Delta flailed on the spot. People were in a dungeon. People. Walking, talking, smart, real, not goblins. Delta followed as they began to turn the corner. Almost tripping over a gutroot room in her haste. Mushrooms, the man said, and the woman paused. Gutrot, kill the man in a day if you eat them. She warned and kept moving. Delta froze. Kill a man. These freaking mushrooms are man killers. Delta had been forced to herself to eat the murderous mushrooms. Slow webs, the woman pointed out, and the man snorted. Yes, I can see the huge swath of white web ahead. He replied and the woman scowled in response. I'll push you into them. Don't tempt me. She warned and moved carefully into the maze. Her berry bush laid at the center, but Delta watched as they held a breath and the hunter woman took a look around. Excitement filled her. Could this first challenger traverse the sticky maze? Delta almost screamed as the woman just examined the web, not moving as her eyes flicked to the spiders that had fled. Top quality here, she muttered, and Delta's excitement turned to confusion as the knife in the woman's hand held a slight red edge. The woman cut down the web in front of her with a slight hiss, and it fell to the ground. Holding it in itself, the woman hacked away at the sides holding it up. She took out a backpack and began to roll up the wood into the small sticky bundle. Delta was numb. Rudy, really? The man asked in exasperation, and the woman began to cut down another section. Quiss, this stuff can make nets, good fabrics, makeshift bandages, and all kinds of magic stuff. The fact that you aren't wizarding a chunk of it for yourself is just sad. She accused. Delta felt faint as she just looked at her ruined maze. Her plans gone in the woman's satchel. The man eyed the bush at the center. Want some berries? He mocked and really snorted. Manor rich berries are too sweet for me, she inclined. The man, Quiss, popped a few into his mouth. They could be deadly, Rudy said without much concern, and Quiss smiled. He patted an amulet on his cufflinks. A mage cart is always prepared, he said simply. Delta eyed them and saw two tiny glowing symbols, or was the symbol made of other symbols? The longer she looked, the more her head hurt. So mushrooms and webs. We could have a nature dungeon on our hands, Quiz said and Rudy cut down more webs. Each cut was a blow to Delta's pride. Useful, rare game to hunt and plenty of herbs that can bring a man back to death or worse. A hangover. Rudy agreed and Delta felt a pink blush crawl up her next. She didn't have rare herbs. She had... The hell in all of its layers is that? Rudy asked as one of her mushies flexed into the darkness. Rudy's eyes seemed to have no trouble spotting it. Delta was sure that it was cheating on some level, unless it was a mixed racial trait. Then Delta could only follow them with a drag to walk. Delta felt like she was failing all the dungeon tests so far. What do you see? Quiss wondered and his body rested casually with his belt where his holster rested. More fire guns, just what are her mushies needed? It looks like a mandrake had a baby with a fungal creeper. Rudy said bluntly, and Quiss paused. Is it dangerous? He asked, and Rudy took aim with a knife. It glowed with the edge, but the glowing light of the blade only did one thing. It gave her mushy a target. It goggled and fired, and Rudy bent down, but Quiss didn't seem to see his knife vision, and got hit square in the chest, full of the splash of mushy's best. He cursed and stumbled back as Rudy threw her knife in the unwavering hand. Her poor mushy gagged as the hot blade buried itself in its mouth, and it went up in flames. Delta stared. It hurt to see it wrinkling and turning black. 
Dalton could feel the pain wasn't anywhere near as bad as it should be, her mushy's feelings more overcooked than in pain. It still didn't make her happy. These people had come into her dungeon, tore down her maze, mocked her berries and killed her mushy. Delta was annoyed. She might even say that she was angry. But did that mean she was about to make a return trip for these people? Hell. No, Delta couldn't fault him. What did Delta expect was that she'd left a mushy in the darkness of a hall. Petting hugs, these people acted logically and with common sense. A mushroom monster with glowing green liquid looking ready to fight. Delta would have run, personally, but for the brave, the course of action was so right that Delta just felt sad at how her visitors must see her dungeon now. It was frustrating to be this powerless. Delta so used to the time being her foe, not with this inability to act. Delta turned and looked, making sure the quiz was okay. Maybe she could make Hob give him an apple or something, provided that he also didn't shank him. Damn it! This stuff stings like a bitch, Chris groaned as he stood, his shirt stoked to the skin with the red where the liquid touched it. Come on, I smell water ahead, Rudy grunted and Chris snorted at the image of Rudy sniffing in the air like a blood wolf. Sure, let's go bathe in dungeon water, I didn't need my legs anyway, Chris said as a snark in his voice. Shut up, gotta get this gunk cleared off, Rudy snapped and Chris could only agree. Unknown substances in a dungeon was bad, almost as bad as finding some in your in room. I don't know what it is about me and nature. First, it was the damn bushes and now it's the mushrooms that are out to get me too. Chris scrambled and rudely led him to the next room. He stopped talking. He stopped complaining. Huh. This is beautiful. Rudy said casually as the expanse of water reflected the growing mushrooms like the glistering stars. The room was like a private paradise, hidden away from the cruelty of the world. The soft white sand, the errant crabs that scuttled away at their approach. Ruli slowed and peered down. Water's super clear, and I ain't seen nothing but the usual fish. If there's a monster down there, it's got camo and we're wrecked either way. She said cheerfully, and Quist just glowered at her. He bent down to use the water and began to soak his clothes. What did the dungeon make of them? He had to be watching. Was it furious at the destructions of its monsters, annoyed at him for using his wonderful place to clean himself? Maybe it was neither, and the trap was about to be sprung on them, and the silent assassin monster in the water. You know, this place ain't bad. These glowing mushrooms don't grow around here. Never seen them, I mean. The water looks nice. Shame I don't have a pole, Ruli admitted, Quiz ignored her. He too was busy sipping the water. It's good, he whispered, and opened his sense of taste to the world, letting it be more than mere signals to his brain. Mana rich water, not simply water created by mana. Quitch took a deep gulp and felt better. Rudy blinked and took a sip herself. Ha! Huh, pretty refreshing. What gives? She directed a question at Quiz, and he tried to phrase it in the shortest way possible while not doing his education shame. The dungeon made the water good for your body's mana, like super weak mana potion. You could probably float in it for a few hours and feel amazing. This dungeon is pretty creative or powerful, Quiz said aloud. He could respect fellow workmanship. Ruli nodded slowly. So webs, lots of mushrooms and water. Oh, and those goblins there might be around. I think nature feels good for now, but I think we can be specific to the old timers need details, Ruli grinned. Quiz could only sigh as his skin irritation ebbed away. Sure. The town of Durance now has a mushroom forest dungeon, he proclaimed. It would make a nice catchy title if they ever wanted to advertise the place. Saying it aloud, he was sure that even the dungeon call might approve. Delta was screaming and trying to choke the man known as Quist with a bare hands. End of chapter. There is no epic loot here, only puns. Chapter 12. The Nature of Give and Take. Dalta watched as the two people eyed the dungeon further in and talked quietly to themselves. Chris had snagged a few of her lumen mushrooms from her pond cave. Eager people will die first. We did two rooms. Let's not get greedy and run into something that we might not be prepared for. Rudy said finally, and Chris rolled his tongue against his teeth. He finally nodded after a moment. You're the expert. Chris and Rudy raised one eyebrow doubtfully. 
she crossed her arms and tapped her knife out of what seemed like a habit. Chris Fire Smasher, the man who burned a dragon to death. Right, sure, let me be the expert. Rudy shrugged, and Chris actually looked annoyed at the moment. You know full well that we don't discuss the past. Not mine, not yours, not anyone's. He warned, and Rudy scowled. Right, let's all pretend that we just don't do that. She said and pushed past the blonde man. Delta was unable to look away from the scene. Burn a dragon? Talking about the past? Delta felt like a minor background character compared to these two. Wasn't she the big new dragon Cory thing? Who were these two? Rudy and Chris navigated back to the entrance and Delta felt a twinge of panic. Who you in contact was vanishing. Delta was ready to send Francois after them, but they both stopped just before the entrance. I always feel like an idiot when doing this. Chris said aloud and Rudy glared at him. Don't disrespect tradition. Manners never hurt anyone but your ego. She replied and both of them put an arm across their chest and bowed his heads a little. Thank you for the adventure. They both said. Rudy was louder and clear and Chris mumbled it. Delta felt warm. She didn't feel any manner rise or DP appear. This was entirely a human emotion. Relief. Didn't they just think that she was evil? Chris wasn't cursing her existence. Rooney wasn't spitting at her. Dalton wanted to shake hands and bow back, or something. Dalton shivered, and from the depths of her dungeon a warm breeze floated up past Chris and Rooney. Rooney beamed like she had just been proven right, and Chris sculled harder. I think that felt like uh, acceptance, appreciation. Hmm, felt like I was right. Rudy mused and Chris waved her off. It was a goblin gas, hot air and superstition. He turned and walked out. Rudy rolled her eyes and then peered into the tunnel of Delta's dungeon. Ignore him, you're pretty decent for a new dungeon. Keep up the good work. Rudy saluted casually and followed Chris out through the white barrier. Delta stared at the space. Don't leave me, she whispered, but they didn't reappear. Delta must have spent some time just waiting because Hob and Gob appeared some time later with two buckets filled with things. We return, master. Hob called and began to empty his bucket. Delta squished her feelings of human isolation down into a tiny hole and attempted to sound cheerful as she expected the items. Well, the gobs had gone far, it seemed, even got some interesting new things. Wyan tree acorn absorb, rabbit corpse absorb, corn swallow egg absorb. Black grambles absorbed. Old rope has been absorbed. Delta rubbed her hands with delight, watching her manner skyrocket. Having Quist and Rule in her dungeon had been enough to push her manner of thirty, and these items hit fifty easily. Her max manner, and with the two new rooms on top of her base, was fifty-five. Delta was slowly but surely surpassing her limits. Gob shook his bucket and a few tiny things fell to the ground. They wriggled and burst open, tiny spiders the size of pennies scuttled about, and they seemed to all try to head towards the entrance. Hob growled and stomped one. Black forest spider hatchling absorbed. Upgrades to common spiders have been unlocked. Hob grumbled as his foot now covered in green slime. Gob tried to get another bucket that they moved quickly, hissing in harmony at the goblins. Delta blinked, surprised by the angry emotions of the spiders as they escaped. Where did you find them? She asked, and Hob looked puzzled. Damn webs. Thought they were berries, not eggs. He promised, and Delta stared at the exit, where the hatchlings had scampered out. The babies were about the size of the spiders in her own old world. Delta just had to wonder how big the adults were, and how the heck two gobs were able to get the egg sacs away so easily. Were her two gobs that skilled, or just lucky? Feeling uneasy, she hurried to her now decreasing 65 mana and continued to shake a dungeon about, happy to see her menus had returned. She moved to her mushroom grove into a new place. If she was going to be known as a freaking mushroom forest, then people might as well see her grove. She placed it just after the mudroom and made it so the people would have to pass through it to reach the goblin camp. Then she spawned another room between the grove and the goblin camp. And as soon as she did, a menu popped up with a little message. A max of five rooms have been reached, excluding special rooms. Level one cannot hold any more core-related rooms. Delta felt a little sad. A room limit per floor. It had sensed something, and the first floor of the dungeon was the smallest and easiest in terms of difficulty. But what about the end-game dungeons? Their floors were massive. 
Delta was pretty sure that there was no end game here other than time passing, so she guessed that it was fair that all dungeons had some same rough floor space. Maybe some dungeons could bypass the limit, and Delta wondered if she could do the same. For now, she took out an uneasy feeling of escaping spiders and channeled it into something that she could have done a while ago. Upgrading. First was the case of the dead mushy. It was ash and there was no healing from that. It was going to be super annoying, Delta decided, that if she had to personally respawn every trap and every monster each time that came through. No, there has to be a trick. She decided and flicked through her monster menu. Not finding a respawn option, she decided to try the construction rooms. She found some odd things, like she could move things in one room without much cost or how she could attach a sound to a particular room. Delta had no idea how to make a sound that could be attachable, so she moved on. Finally, she found something at the Goblin Camp menu, the formerly layer of her floor. Layer, remove Goblin Camp upgrade. Set monster respawn list, 5 monsters per level, 5 DP per monster added. Set monster respawn rank, rare. Three rare monsters for the first level, 10 DP per monster rank added. Monster respawn to contracted monsters, 100 DP per respawn. Delta thought her little eyes might have popped out of cost to bring back Hob and Gob. If one, or she cringed at the idea, both of them got killed, then Delta would be very poor, but very relieved at being able to summon them back. Delta just decided not to have them die if she could help it. Still, this menu was the very key, and she felt the sheepish that she didn't question why a layer was something that she should build from the very start. Bosh room, self-explanatory. Layer, a space that respawns her monsters to avoid her. The call, from micromanaging the whole process. Delta liked it. She liked it a lot. Considering she had 121 DP, Delta just wiggled her fingers and filled the slots. Francois and her single mushy would now respawn roughly around where they had died, she hoped. With 45 mana kicking, she created another mushy behind the mud room and that way the pond room. She checked her menus and was pleasantly surprised as she checked the bats and spiders. They did have respawn features naturally. Her spiders would take an hour to fully reappear and don't seem to count as a total monster count. Delta guessed that it was because they weren't really monsters, just local wildlife imitations, so she could add bats if she wanted. Instead, she created another two goblins, bringing her mana down to seven. The pair appeared and looked almost exactly the same, but one had a little snaggle tooth. Welcome to the dungeon, Delta greeted, and both goblins bowed their heads as Hob eyed them. His sight was making him appear more dangerous than her new gobs. Delta decided that she would save the crane claws for another level. She wanted a fishing pond to be blood free, a place of peace, her little paradise. Delta registered her new mushy and goblins to the lair and alerted to being unable to spawn any further monsters. Delta giggled as the goblins chased each other around the dungeon. It was good to have a noise in the dungeon that wasn't mushrooms bursting through the soil or spiders hissing at one another. Speaking of, Delta sat down and began to browse her menus, eager to see what upgrades she could mess around with now. I declared the new dungeon to be fit quality and not the forbidden type. I also state this dungeon seems to be very cooperative and even bade us farewell. If legends are to believe, I further state that we, the town of Durance, may benefit from resources that the dungeon may create. Chris said and Elder Pick Rudy grinned. Place was pretty cool, she added, her endless wisdom to Chris's report. Pick eyed them, and I rolled back to go to sleep, and then he's staring through them, as if seeing something not quite of this world. Nature, huh? A little common, but that's not a bad thing. Mushrooms are interesting. Do you think that it'll develop in ways that suggest a plague? Gut rots aren't the most friendly of things, and we all know what happens if they catch fire. She said, and with a low grumble. Old lazy Josie frowned. Dungeon creations may not act the same. It doesn't matter until Seth is done examining them. As the head of the pesky pests and disastrous biology, he will have been able to tell us soon. She said, and Chris wondered how wise it was to have a man in charge of both benign threats and life-ending threats. The pixie nest did not require infernal fire from the 67th layer of the abyss, but Seth very much used the stuff to do everything from cooking toast to murdering infectious shadow beasts. Seath 
was a very basic man with very little inclination towards learning the meaning of moderation. He'll most likely just suggest fire to be safe, Quiz pointed out, and Josie laughed. His cliff notes will be enough. I'll warn people to use magic lights or crystal lightning lamps. I do not want to cause another cut rod burning. She agreed. Pick slid his false teeth about. Quiz hardly noted that he was using his set made for meteor ore today. Good against scales and ghosts. So, what do we tell the king? Ruli asked casually, and the room went quiet. We must report the dungeon, due to the way that it is inherently increases the kingdom's wealth. It'll be a crime to do otherwise. However, as soon as we do, the fair play company will come, the guilds will come, the merchants will come, and... Josie looked visibly pained for her next words. The teenagers with their backstories will come. She managed, and Pick's teeth fell from his mouth. Quis shuddered as Ruri grimaced. Quis eyed the report on the desk in front of Josie. One word on it would be an ash. Well, sadly, we can do nothing. The message will arrive when it arrives. Pick said after putting his teeth back in. Josie hummed. Due to our town being so small, we do not have any royal transport or messengers, or only the peacekeeper, who just happens to be our only active mage, capable of making the journey to the capital, and I cannot in good mind risk sending him away. Our monster hunter must guard the dungeon. Oh dear, I guess we'll have to wait for the next tax collection to pass the message on. Josie sighed as she sipped at a flask. Ruli was smiling, but spoke in a serious tone. Would our mage not be able to magic the letter to the capital? She wondered and Pick smiled. Mail via magical means is outlawed, she informed her. Quiz blinked at him wildishly. When? he asked, outraged. Jose and Pick shared a look. Just now, they both agreed. Quiz stared at them. He cleared his throat and he took in a very polite tone. What about receiving magical mail? he asked. His Mad Mage Monthly was coming soon. Also, the Wicked Witches, but they didn't need to know about that. Josie shrugged. Can't be blamed if someone sends you mail. I myself am waiting for Hunter's Digest and my calendar to support the cause of failing night education. I paid for it all, after all. Before the law took hold, of course. Josie nodded and really looked even more wicked as she agreed. Not because the calendar has the knights appearing increasingly scantily clad for the viewer each month. She asked and Josie just gave them both a look and told the meeting was over. Quiz turned without a word, not wanting to wait for Pick's reveal of his monthly pleasures. Quiz, Pick called out, and Quiz mentally screamed, If this dungeon has any good materials, let me know. I need some new chompers soon, and I've pushed all of my good sets beyond their breaking point, Pick sighed. Quiz felt both relieved and concerned. Pick without protective gentures was a problem. Pick brushed religiously. Everyone knew that. No, the problem was that the man used to be known as Pick the Demon Eater. The name was pretty clear of what Pick used to do. Having his teeth exposed might be trouble as Pick chewed on everything without thinking. Quiz himself had lost worst edition of the heat spells for cooking during his visit to Pick once. Yes, Elder Pick, Quiz bowed and his head and he left before Josie, dropped an unfetched quest on her head or worse, an escort request. Quiz would rather spontaneously combust before he ever did one of those again. Dalta smiled as she read over her menus. Item purchase, rabbit haunch, 7 DP. The brambles haven't unlocked a new trap by itself. It had said upgrade and would have been unlocked by the tripwire trap. And brambles by themselves made for a good obstacle. Trap purchase, sticky floor panel, 9 DP. Weak tripwire, 5 DP, upgrade unlocked upon purchase. Falling Rock, weak, 10 DP or 10 mana. Flame Gout Trap, 8 DP. Stake Trap, 10 DP, covered in sharpened sticks designed to ruin boots and hurt feet. The acorn was interesting. It seemed to be added to the construction menu under a new option. Construction Purchases. Moss, 5 DP. Brambles, 5 DP. Small Wine Sapling, 15 DP. Delta was starting to get excited with things cost a little more than normal. Delta didn't know what or why a sapling cost so much, but she imagined that a tree overlooking a pond and didn't think twice before she bought it. With having purchased it, Delta felt a light bulb click in her head as she remembered that she could get more information on things before she purchased them. Thankfully that no one knew about this little snip-up, Delta held her finger over the menu. 
small wyme sapling, a rare plant that grows in the forests. Over time it may become a tree, it is notoriously hard to grow in a controlled conditions. At its current stage it is known for the ability to turn into general antidotes from the poisonous creatures that live around it. Delta was impressed at by what Hob and Gob had managed to find by sheer talent, skill, hard work and maybe luck. The egg she didn't seem to unlock anything, but she shrugged. The gobs had brought her more and she maybe got something. Until then she would just get to make the egg. Corn Swallow Egg An egg of the corn swallow. This egg will never hatch due to being in the dungeon. However, the taste is pretty good. Delta tried to ignore how she had bacon, in a sense, eggs, mushrooms, apples and fish. She was only a few meats short of a full breakfast. Delta tried to imagine how the poor souls would feel down on the line to beat her epic dungeon boss to get a hearty breakfast as a reward. Delta would love it, but she could see how people might get miffed. The rope was some research, perhaps into her traps, or maybe she could make them for an item for people. Delta looked at a research menu and felt like maybe it should be start buying some. Research menu, irrigation, study how to use water more efficiently to reduce the costs of crops that require water, DP10. Basic wooden equipment, be able to create wooden weapons or basic armor of wood for loot drops or contracted monsters able to use weapons, 5DP. Basic stone equipment, be able to create weapons or basic armor of stone for loot drops or contracted monsters able to use weapons, 15DP. Understand the best methods to use rope in various features, 10DP. Delta shrugged and purchased them all. Her 81 DP dropped to 41, and Delta could have stockpiled the points and waited until she unlocked some uber epic upgrade, but that just seemed pointless. Hob looked confused as Delta giggled to herself. Rope researched, purchased. All traps and construction using rope and rope itself cost one less DP. Irrigation research, purchased. Rooms that grow crops and crop monsters cost two less DP for their functions and upgrades. Basic wooden equipment now able to be made. Basic stone equipment now able to be made. Delta hummed, fingers wingling as she grew curious. Wooden sword, she called aloud. Wooden sword added to the item menu, two mana. Delta purchased it and gestured to the space near Hob. She winced as it clonked the goblin on the head and rattled to the ground. Master? Hob groaned and blinked in a few times at the object. Sword for Hob? He whispered and picked it up. Delta blinked as the sword shrunk a little into the cop's hands. Her items can be perfect sizes. Delta smacked herself. Of course they did. Otherwise random drops would become hellish. Did they lose the ability outside of her dungeon? Or did all clothes resize themselves? Delta stared off into space in the mere idea. No, wrong size clothes. What heavens of a world? Gob returned and dumped more mushrooms and stones into her dungeon. He cheered and vanished again. Gob was a lot more energetic than Hob was. Her mana pinged to twelve and howled. Delta wandered off, dazed. Hob charged into the bathroom, showing off his new weapon as Delta walked through. Fran grinned within a few moments and had disarmed the Gob without much effort. Delta let them play as she looked at the last egg on her menu that blinked out at her. It wasn't a new option, it was actually one of her very first ones. Delta could have messed about with the newest upgrade. Common Black Spiders, upgrade web to be stronger and less flammable. Will still catch fire if now open flame, but takes more effort than DP. Delta could have given the room of nightmares more power, but she decided that she needed to be a little more serious. She went to the mushies before her bathroom, and she eyed the option. Mushroom Spitters, Greater Mushroom, 10 mana, or Myconoid, 10 mana. With some hesitation, Delta hit the button and the new menu appeared. Greater Mushroom or Myconid. Delta focused on the mushy before her and hit Greater Mushroom. The mana left her and the mushy went rigid before cracks appeared all over its body, and then a new body burst forth from the shattered shell from the former self. The Greater Mushroom was like a mushy but also very different. Delta knew this description was useless, but didn't care much as she was too busy screaming and writhing form before her. She fled to the end of the tunnel. She stared back at the monsters. A good two feet taller than her old Mushy stared back. Mushy looked like a giant mushroom with beady eyes and a maw with acid inside. 
The greater mushroom was like that, but someone decided it wasn't scary enough and made the spongy skin dark red and the small beady eyes large and narrow glaring holes. The mouth, now having actual teeth, and the light green acid that was now bubbling dark green liquid that hissed in the open air. Oh, and it now had a thorny tentacles that it was using to feel about in the dark. Dalta peeked around the corner and the mushy. No, it wasn't just a mushy. This was something else. This was a great mushy. Delta knew that she should have gone with the spiders. Or oh, wait, would they have gotten more evil as well? Delta felt the conflicted and fled to the core room, screeching past the great mushy, who looked confused. In her core room, she slid down the closed door and sighed. She opened her eyes and began to scream again. On her stone platform, on all four corners of the thing, were four giant brown mushrooms. Her menu opened up and a little cheery ring, as if trying to surprise her. Due to the core's love of mushrooms, the mushroom grove, the development of two or more mushrooms, and earning the title Mushroom Forest Dungeon to five or more people, and evolving one mushroom monster, you have gained a free mushroom statue decoration item for your core room. Dalton got up and ran with a blood-curdling battle cry at the menu, which promptly ran away from her, the thing ringing in alarmed panic. The spiders moved into the forest, anew and fresh, and the only goal was to return. Return to the queen. End of chapter. That, my friends, concludes this episode. I hope that you enjoyed. If you wish to support the author of the story, there will be a link to below. If you wish to support this channel, there are multiple ways to do so, which will all also be linked below. But the easiest way would be to subscribe and share my videos as much as possible. And until next time, I hope you all have a good one. And I'll see you all in the next video. Cheers.